Why South Sudan? An Every Village podcast where we answer questions about the world's youngest nation. The question of the day is, is South Sudan mentioned in the Bible? Hey everyone, this is Tiana Johnston, the host of this podcast called Why South Sudan? Today is going to be a goodie that we have someone in the studio that really loves to talk about the Bible, and I love to talk about the Bible with him. So surprise, surprise, this is Andrew Brown. (laughs) Hey, what an intro. (laughs) Yes. So one of my favorite things about working with Andrew is talking about scripture, and it's it's very, very fun. Um, So today we are going to be highlighting, um, you know, many scriptures that are debatable, but I wanted to kind of see your thoughts and kind of just like talk through because a few days ago, or I guess, yeah, a few days ago we talked, um, we had devotion. So every morning, all of our staff meets together and we do a devotion time together and we pray and you really felt impressed on your heart to share, um, share something with us to encourage us. And I was like, man, that would be a really good podcast. Um, So I wanted to hear from you, but I want to back it up a little bit. So when in your life did like the word, you know, did you become passionate about the word or even the word come to life for you? Um, Yeah, just with like- Oh, wow, going back that far, Uh, that's great. Uh, You know, I am very blessed to have incredible parents who are faithful believers and and devoted followers of Christ. And they taught me from a young age to value that first and foremost in my life. And uh, the the practice of uh, Bible reading was embedded in me at a young age, and so, I remember my parents um, giving me a, a Bible reading calendar. I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I would guess probably nine or ten, even um, years old. And um, and I followed that Bible reading calendar, and it, it read through the Bible in a year. And I started probably about that age, and started reading the Bible every year um, for many many years. And I've had a few years, some years uh, where I I didn't do that as as religiously either because you know life was busy uh, or because I decided to focus in on going deeper through a book or two of the Bible rather than the whole survey or whatever. So I've gone back and forth, but for the most part, I've found that rhythm for many many years of my life, and so it's been a great privilege. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love that. Um, I do have to admit, I actually. You know, recent. Well, I guess me and my husband we started going to Houston's First Baptist. Um, what two years ago now? And I would admit this is like when I've really come to like really dive into Scripture and wanting to know more. And yeah, I think just coming to to Christ later in life, it was just like you know passion and emotion and you know just feeling Him and knowing Him and um, delighting in the Lord. But there's such a beauty of just knowing scripture in such a, such a different way. And so something I really do look up to you in. Um, so let's hear your thoughts. Is South Sudan mentioned in the Bible? Andrew Brown. Yes or no. (laughs) (laughs) Putting me in that spot now. So, um, you know, I'll just uh, start by, you know, just uh, mentioning that, you know, um, this is, uh, you know, there's some debate discussion. So if you look this up on the internet, you know, while you're listening to us, you know, don't hold me to any one particular opinion. I will say that um, the, the the land of Cush is uh, the land that is sometimes attributed to what we know today as South Sudan. Um, it's certainly in that general vicinity of the world, um, mm-hmm. but there's some, some debate about exactly what people group we're talking about. Um, a lot of people's Bibles will have a footnote that say Ethiopia. Um, I, I would certainly encourage people that read that not to just assume um, modern day Ethiopia. Ethiopia used to be a much larger kingdom, and so it doesn't not necessarily that helpful to mention Ethiopia as a footnote when that doesn't even refer to current day um, Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. So where does Kush specifically uh, refer to? What people group and? And I think that, you know, probably a lot of, um, you know, studies and, and, and uh, commentators would say really modern day Sudan, um, which is a little bit distinct from South Sudan. And we've talked about that, I think, on this podcast. Um, the Northern Sudanese are, are definitely different ethnically mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and experientially. Um, but I think South Sudan certainly is, is uh, an area that could be attributed to um, the, uh, the, the land of Kush as well. And you'll see that referenced. I mean, some South Sudanese definitely think of themselves as Kushites and not necessarily all 
Um, you know, we know of a great partner ministry called Kusher Christ that mm-hmm. works in South Sudan. And so definitely um, is, is quite commonly thought. And when you get into scripture and you read about the land of Kush and the people of Kush, from a descriptive perspective, it definitely sounds a lot like the people that we know of in South Sudan. And mm-hmm. so I want to preface all that by saying, you know, is South Sudan mentioned in the Bible? I'm, we're not totally positive, but when you re- read about Kush, um, you can think of that general area. And so what I was sharing with the team the other day in our devotions just was really encouraging. And it came out of um, actually Hab- Habakkuk. Um, we were uh, studying that at church and and uh, you know had a, a, a prophecy in there. And then my mind connected it to a, a passage of scripture that I'd known for years, but and 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 it's about Cush, but it just you know brought a new light to me in that, and and a really a sense of hope and and love for it. So what I want to do is I'm going to read a few different scriptures and and talk about you know I feel like what how the Lord encouraged me uh, in that day, and I hope that it's encouraging to you as well as as our listeners. But Isaiah 18 is uh, the chapter in the Bible that uh, is one specific prophecy about the the people of Cush. And there's other references to Cush throughout the Old Testament, but Isaiah 18 is a full prophecy about the the land of Cush. So I'm just going to start reading it, and I'm going to read most of that chapter. Um, It's a short chapter anyway, but I'll read most of the chapter, and then I'll stop actually intentionally before getting to the end. But uh, Isaiah 18, starting in verse 1, says, Ah, land of whirring wings that is beyond the rivers of Cush, which sends ambassadors by the sea and vessels of of papyrus on the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. All you inhabitants of the world, you who dwell on the earth, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look, when a trumpet is blown, hear. For thus the Lord said to me, I will quietly look from my dwelling, like clear heat and sunshine, like a a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he cuts off the shoots with pruning hooks, and the spreading branches he lops off and clears away. They shall all of them be left to the birds of prey of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth, and the birds of prey will summer on them, and all the beasts of the earth will winter on them. And I'm going to stop there for a minute. I've known this chapter in the Bible for many years, really ever since I started working in South Sudan, and thought of it as relating to the people that we love and serve. Um... And certainly right at the top, you get the description of the people, and it's it's quite accurate. A nation tall and smooth. If you know the South Sudanese, they're some of the tallest people in the world on average, and they're very smooth-skinned. They don't have any body hair pretty much at all. And that's why when they see us white folk with arm hair, <laughs> they'll come up and the kids have never seen arm hair, and they think it's so strange, and they'll feel your arm, right? It's so true. <laughs> um, and so, so anyway, a nation tall and smooth, very much descriptive. And it says to a people feared near and far. And that's that's very much the Dinka that we talk about so much is they're, they're warriors mm-hmm. um, and they are feared. They're very fearsome and um, they're known to be strong and, and, uh, and fighting people. A nation mighty and conquering whose land the rivers divide. And there are rivers that scatter all across the land of South Sudan. The Nile River goes right through South Sudan and splits out into this huge delta called the Sud, which mm-hmm. is where the name comes from and stretches hundreds of miles. And from there, there's tributaries that go all across um, the, the land. So the, the land is certainly divided by rivers. And so all of that, you know, is a very great description of the nation. But then it, it kind of continues on and um, and it talks about, um, and I love this. This is the, the ESV, but it says, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look. And I just thought about that and I realized, you know, that's what we're doing in South Sudan through radio. We're raising a signal, literally a broadcast signal, over the land. And, um, and, and we're calling people to, to look, to hear. When the trumpet's blown, hear. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And, um, and so, you know, that got my mind thinking about it. Um, but then from there, for the next few verses that I read, it starts to, to not look great. It talks about God cutting off the shoots with pruning hooks. And, uh, and spreading branches, he lops off and clears away. And he talks about the birds of prey will summer on these these people, and the bir- beasts of the earth will winter on them. You know, and um, and it's it's not a very complimentary prophecy. And I've always thought of Isaiah 18 as kind of a discouraging prophecy about the people of South Sudan. It's a more a prophecy of judgment, which you know a lot of the Old Testament prophecies are judgment over 
you know, the, the Ninevites or, or, you know, the Moabites or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, here I always thought of it as this is a prophecy against the people of Cush. And I kind of stopped there. Well, let me, let me, like, I'll come back to Isaiah 18, but let me read the verse in Habakkuk that started all this process and what the Lord showed me. Habakkuk 2, verse 3. And here the, um, the prophet Habakkuk says, For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And as we were studying that, you know, the pastor was talking about, you know, um, God's vision in general. I certainly wasn't talking about South Sudan, but the Lord kind of impressed on me, my heart. I went to Isaiah 18 because I thought of this prophecy of South Sudan. And I started seeing it in a different way because, you know, it talks about this, this, you know, this vision that's awaiting an appointed time. And I thought, what, what is the vision for the people of South Sudan? What is the prophecy for the people of South Sudan? And it says it hastens the end. It will not lie. Um, it will surely come. It will not delay. But it tells us in the middle there, it says, if it seems slow, wait for it. And man, have I felt that so many times in our work. You know, it, 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 so many times it feels slow. It's slow going and hard. And sometimes it feels like you're going backwards when the nation went plummeted back into war in 2013 and 2016. Mm-hmm. I, I felt that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're plodding through year after year trying to, to develop a nation, it's hard going and it can feel really slow. But this encouraged me, but wait for it because, you know, it's, it's, it surely will come. It will not delay. Um, it, 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 it hastens to the end. It will not lie. And that's because it's not that the prophecy is, you know, a matter of, of truth. It's the one who gave that, that word, that vision, that prophecy, and that's God himself. Mm-hmm. And that reminded me of Numbers 23 where it talks about God and it says, God's not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not fulfill it? And I just was reminded that, you know, all prophecies are done in God's sight. It's, mm-hmm. He doesn't give them idly or in vain. When he says it, it's going to come to pass. Now, in our eyes, in our perspective of time, it might feel slow, but we just need to wait for it because it will come to pass. And so taking that all the way back to Isaiah 18, I was renewed with a, a sense of hope for this nation because our vision is to see South Sudan as a nation for Christ. Is it going to come? Well, you go to Isaiah 18 and you think, well, no, it's, this is a prophecy of their judgment, their punishment, and maybe that's what we're living in, right? I, we don't know exactly. They've been lopped off uh, and cleared away that, with pruning hooks and, and um, you know, the blossoms are, are done and all these things. You think, well, maybe that's their end. But as is so often the case when we read scripture, sometimes we just stop way too soon, mm-hmm. way too quickly. And you see that in the Psalms when David is lamenting. But so often in those sad, sad Psalms that he writes, he ends with hope. He reminds us to restore our, our hope in the Lord. And it's the same here in Isaiah 18 because I, I stopped at verse 6. There's one more verse in Isaiah 18. So starting in verse 7 of, of that chapter, it says this, At that time, tribute will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering whose land the rivers divide to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. And there it is. And I read that verse with fresh eyes just the other day. And I thought, yes, Lord, yes. The first six verses might be a prophecy about trouble and trial and persecution or even punishment, discipline, whatever you want to call it, hardship. But there's still an end. There's a verse seven. There's there's that last prophetic word that God gave over the nation the people of Cush that says, at that time, what is that time? Well, it's sometime in the future, a tribute is going to be brought to the Lord of hosts. That is a gift from these people, a gift of worship, their hands in surrender before the Lord from this people that are tall and smooth, you know, people feared near and far. That's the South Sudanese. And I realized, wow, God has already promised South Sudan will become a nation for Christ. <laughs> this is possible. We're not, every village isn't hasn't come up with some vision that we're just you know, mm-hmm. throwing out in the air and thinking, ah, we, we, we want this to, this is a, you know, enticing slogan, you know, but we don't know whether it's going to come. It's going to come to pass, mm-hmm. not because it's our vision, but because it's God's vision. And he's given that as a prophetic word already. And he's not a man that he should lie. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it hastens to the end. It will not lie. Sure, it seems slow, but wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. And so, I don't know, that just put a, a, a such a, a, beautiful bow on it for me because I've, I've realized over the last few years that we're working for things that we're not going to fully enjoy the fruit of. Now, we're starting to see some of the fruit of our labors, and it's a 
blessed thing to be a part of. And we get to see people come to know Christ and we get to see communities, you know, that are committing themselves to, 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 to Christ-like living. We're seeing churches planted and built up in, in the Word of God and all these things as a part of our, our, our ministry. We love that. But we also recognize from a geopolitical and a national perspective, South Sudan's still a mess. It's still the least developed nation in the world. It's still utterly corrupt. They still have never had an election in their history. They've still had all these issues that we can point to. And if you Google South Sudan in the news, you're going to see mostly negative things. Mm -hmm. We're not going to deny any of that as true. It it is true. But there's hope behind it all. Because, you know, it, it doesn't matter how long it is in our perspective. In God's perspective, it's already done. At that time whenever that is, at the proper time that God has appointed, at that time, a tribute will be brought from that people to the Lord of hosts, a tribute of worship, and South Sudan will be a nation for Christ. And so, I don't know, that's what it was kind of put in my heart, and I, I loved it, and, um, you know, it's just something that I, I hold dear, because now we're not just working for, fighting for, praying for, sweating for something that is in our hearts or our minds, we're doing all of that because it's on God's heart, mm-hmm. and He's not a man that He should lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he won't say it and not accomplish it. And so we can now step out in victory and know that, man, the seeds that we sow today are going to bear fruit in the proper time, and they will bear the exact fruit that God wants it to bear. And I love that. So, mm-hmm. Amen. Oh, so good. I mean, even as as you were speaking, you know, I was just thinking of Scripture and Scripture and. You know, in John 16, where, you know, Jesus is talking to his his disciples and he's saying, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. So I think it's so easy for us to, you know, kind of just look at that Isaiah scripture and just be like, oh, man, it's so negative. But it's just like, but look at this is a whole story of what God's doing. And and the South Sudanese are part of redemption. Revelation 7, 7. I mean, every tongue in language and tribe and people will be around the throne and that's including our south sudanese Mm -hmm. brothers and sisters regardless um of anything else that they they're grafted in like we are and so praise praise god for that yeah and i mean you think about any of our favorite epic movies you know and if you know if you're told that the hero is going to win in the end um you know, it, it makes the, the passage of the story a lot different, right? You know, mm-hmm. I absolutely love Lord of the Rings and the books and the movies. And, and I just think about it. I, 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 I get emotional still watching that movie sometimes, but I know what the end is. Mm-hmm. I, and it's victory, right? And, uh, and that's ours as well. And we're, we're not there in the end yet, but God's already there. Mm-hmm. And the victory's already been won. And uh, there's no uncertainty about it. And, um, and I think about this, I, I don't remember the exact chapters. I, I didn't look that up for this podcast, but I do remember just it's probably two years ago being in South Sudan. And when I'm in South Sudan, I sleep in a hammock. Um, it's the coolest way to sleep. And so I'm, I'm out, <laughs> out, out in the elements, um, you know, every night. And, um, and, you know, it's not uncommon to hear uh, wild dogs barking in South Sudan. There's a lot of wild dogs <laughs> mm-hmm. um, or we'll call them stray dogs, whatever you want to call them. Um, but typically, you know, you'll hear the howl fest for, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of the night and then mm-hmm. they'll calm down. Right. Well, this was a couple of years ago, but I remember the dogs just going at it. I mean, they weren't just howling, they were fighting. It was nasty. I mean, it was, it was, it was bad dog fighting and you could hear it. Mm-hmm. And, and it went on for hours, hours. I mean, I slept terribly that night and I've never had a night like that before. And it really troubled me beyond the, just the lack of sleep. I was thinking about, uh, a prophecy in Isaiah, and I didn't remember the exact chapter. It was the next morning. I looked it up, and somewhere in the 30s, Isaiah 30s. But there's this chapter about how this 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 prophecy against the land that has become a haunt for jackals is what it says. Well, jackals are really just wild dogs, is mm-hmm. what they are, and um, and ostriches, and and it just talks about this barren landscape that has become a place that's so unsafe that. Um, you know, no one's able to walk it um, at night, and 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 um, and it's this this terrible landscape. And I was just feeling really heavy that morning because I was like, "This is literally what South Sudan is. It's a, like developed nations don't have wild dogs fighting for hours at night. People mm-hmm. just don't they don't they don't stand for that, right? Mm-hmm. They're 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 developed enough that they've taken care of that. Mm-hmm. In South Sudan, it's just normal." Nobody's stopping that because it's just they're used to that conflict and, and, you know, and it just made me sad that this is the reality of this nation. It is a barren landscape. It is a tough place to live. There's not 
there's not access to waters in the desert, mm -hmm. right? But so I was feeling really heavy when I woke up that morning. But then I kept reading. And I, so I was like, yes, to all these things that I read in this chapter. And then I, I turned the page to the beginning of the next chapter and I kept reading. And it's really a continuation, but it's two sides to the same coin. Mm -hmm. And it's a continuation talking about the prophecy over that same land that was a, a haunt for jackals, a, a deserted place. And it talks about the, 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 the crocuses bearing fruit in the, in the desert or whatever. I don't remember the mm -hmm. exact wording, but the, the flowers starting to bud and the, the, the streams in the desert and all that. Yes. And I realized, again, once again, I stopped too soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, today it's a haunt for jackals, but tomorrow it can be a lush place for, for mankind and beast. And, um, and that's our earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all places when Christ reigns on high. Um, but South Sudan specifically is going, going to be that one day again. It's going to be a place where we're able to, you know, be led by streams of water mm -hmm. and, uh, and where God lays us down in green pastures and restores our souls. Even when we walk through the valley of shadow death, he's with us, mm -hmm. right? And that's true for the South Sudanese and it's true for us. And so once again, that was another really impactful moment a couple of years ago in scripture. And so I just love how God teaches us the truths about his character and his plans through the word of God. Yes. Oh, it's so good. I told you guys, that's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, oh, that's so great. I think testimonies and talking about the word. Yeah. Can be fired up. Well, yeah, and, and the word specifically, I mean, there's just nothing that can give us hope like that. And, oh, and it's so it's our sure foundation. So thanks Amen. for giving me the opportunity. Yes, yeah, so good. All right, we welcome you back to the next episode as we answer the question, what does the work look like here in the States? Take care. <laughs>